Good morning. Buen día. We are small in number today. Somos pocos en número el día de hoy. And uh, Mr. Casey does not have a microphone today because his voice is shot. Y Casey no puede cantar el día de hoy. So we need you to stand with us today. Entonces pongamos de pie. And uh, we're all going to try to sing a little louder and stronger. Vamos a cantar un poquito más fuerte el día de hoy. Let's join together. Cantemos juntos.
pray together this morning. Oremos juntos. We're thankful, God, that when we come into this place, estamos agradecidos, Dios, porque ya cuando venimos a este lugar, that we come as we are. Lord. Venimos como somos. We don't come, Father God, with with masks on. We don't come with disguises. We're 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 who we are before you, Lord. No venimos ni con máscara ni con ningún disfraz, mas venimos ante ti como somos. And we are who we are before each other. Y somos quienes somos frente uno al otro. One in you, Lord Jesus. Uno en ti, Señor Jesús. And as we join together, Father, we pray that we would lift up your holy and worthy name today. Te nos unimos juntos en canto, te pedimos que podamos alzar tu nombre santo. The name of Jesus. El nombre de Jesús. We pray these things in that name today, Lord. Oramos todo esto en ese nombre. The name of Jesus. El nombre de Jesús.
As we go to the Lord in prayer today, you may want to do just that, come to the altar. Mientras usted viene a orar ante el Señor esta mañana, tal vez quiere sentir simplemente el venir al altar. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul. El Señor desde mi corazón. All my inmost being, praise His holy name. Mi alma exalta su santísimo nombre. Praise the Lord, my soul. Alabado sea el Señor desde mi interior. And for not and forget not all His benefits. Y que nunca yo olvide sus beneficios, sus bendiciones. Who forgives all your sins? Quien perdona todos nuestros pecados. And heals all your diseases. Y sana todas nuestras dolencias. Who redeems you from the pit? Quien te redime desde lo más profundo. And crowns you with love and compassion. Y te corona con amor y compasión. Who satisfies your desires with good things? Que satisfaces tus deseos con cosas buenas. So that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Para que tu juventud sea renovada como la de las águilas. Psalm 103, 1 through 5. Salmo 103 del 1 al 5. Let's pray this morning. Oremos juntos. Dear Father, we come before you this morning with our worship and our praise today. Just giving you all the glory, dear Father. As we can come to an altar and call you Savior today. And we can think about the scripture who says, that you just give us so many things. And you bring us out of this pit that we come from. And you bestow love and compassion upon us, dearing Father. And we're so thankful for that today. The way that you work in our lives, dearing Father. No matter what we're doing or where we've been, dear Jesus. You accept us for who we are. We give you praise today. Dearing Father, I pray for our congregation today. With the many different needs that are represented and requests that are going up right now may you hear our request today during Father and during Father may you, you shine your light into our own hearts as we pray and recognize the things that we can change or should be doing different and during Father I pray that as we, we leave these walls today that the people that we encounter on a regular basis will be able to see something different about us. Maybe they'll see a joy that we shouldn't have. Or maybe we should, they would see forgiveness when we shouldn't forgive. Daring Father, may we, we make a difference. May we be your hands and feet. And daring Father, we just ask you be with this service today for the words that you have for us through Pastor Mark may we come in here today with open hearts and open minds and take it all in so we may be forever changed daring Father, we just give this service over to you this morning so that you may work in each and one of our lives and through us as a church. We give you all the praise and glory this morning in your precious name. Amen. 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 Good morning. Buenos dias. How's everybody doing today? We're glad that you're here with us. This is the time of our worship service where we take our tithes and offerings. Every week our ushers, they pass out a black booklet that we ask that you sign and kind of pass down your aisle. And as they come, I just want the, the children who are in here today just to come forward so we can pray as you head out to Children's Church. So 
So let's pray this morning. During Father, we're so thankful for the opportunity for tithes and offerings. Estamos agradecidos, Señor de los cielos, por la oportunidad de los diezmos y las ofrendas. To be a giving people who makes a difference in the kingdom. Porque podemos dar y podemos hacer una diferencia en tu reino. So we ask that you just bless our tithes and offerings today. Así que te pedimos que tú bendigas los diezmos y las ofrendas. And I just ask you with our kids today. Y que tú te quedes con nuestros niños. As they go to their service. Mientras ellos van a su servicio. And I specifically pray for the kids who are going to camp this week, dear Father. Específicamente por aquellos niños que van al campamento. May you meet with each and every one of them. Que tú estés con que tú estés con cada uno de ellos. May they learn more about you than they know today. Que ellos aprendan de ti muchísimo. In your precious name. En tu nombre, Ramos. Amen. Amen. I'm reminding you that you can always give online here at the church. Aquí en la iglesia siempre puede dar en línea. The opportunity is always available on our website. La oportunidad siempre está abierta para que usted lo haga en el website de la iglesia. Also, I just was praying for the kids and their camp that they're going to this week. Um, Pastor Mickey's having a little fundraiser of Adopt a Box. And the uh, Adopt a Box is out in the foyer on the children's table. So if you'd like to give like $10 towards the camp for the kids going to, just mark that $10 and then turn it in. Solo marque esos 10 dólares y después entreguelos. And every little bit helps towards the camp this week. Cada parte ayuda. Also, every Friday night here at the church at 6.45. Y también cada viernes por la noche aquí en iglesia tenemos. There's a group of men and women who come and they play soccer here at the church. Hay hombres y mujeres que vienen aquí a jugar fútbol en la iglesia a las 6 a las 6 de la tarde, 6.45 de la noche. It's indoor and in air conditioning. Is adentro y con aire acondicionado. So that's a positive. Entonces eso es bueno. And you get some exercise. Y también puedes ejercitarse un poquito. So I encourage you to come be part of that. Entonces le invito a que usted venga a ser parte de esto. Also, we have our baptism that's coming up in August. También tenemos nuestro servicio de bautismo que está pasando en agosto. We do this annually um, every year. Hacemos esto cada año. And if you're interested in being baptized this year, si está interesado en ser bautizado este año, I need you to talk to one of our pastors. Habla cualquiera de nuestros pastores. Also, if you have already been baptized, si tú ya sido bautizado, we'd like to invite you to be part of that service and te celebration te together. También te invitamos a ser parte de servicio y celebración juntos. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't bring your thing up for you, Edward. I'm sorry. No hay problema, no hay problema. I'm slacking today. No, no. Last Sunday, our, um, our intern, Vince Laprenzi, spoke. El domingo pasado, nuestro estudiante de pasantía, eh, Vince Laprenzi, habló. And at the end of the service, he gave you a chance to respond. Y al final del servicio, le dio una oportunidad para responder. Some of you raised your hand and said, I would like to be a mentor. Others said, I would like to be mentored. And if you were one of the ones that raised your hand, today after the service, Vince will be out at the Welcome Center right outside these doors with a sign-up sheet for you to sign and say, this is what I want to be or this is what I want to do. And we're going to try to, to see if that sermon last week will be put into practice in the upcoming days. It's difficult to believe that uh, Edward and Ashley have been married for three weeks now. Ashley and Ashley have been married for three weeks now. And Ashley, are you still surviving okay? Yeah, Ashley, tú estás sobreviviendo. She said this, yeah, yeah, a little bit. There is hope. Hay esperanza. In uh, December 27th, on December 27th, el 27 de diciembre, my wife and I will have celebrated 33 years of marriage. Y después sí, vamos a celebrar 27, 33 años de matrimonio. And interestingly, if you're going to applaud for my 33 years of marriage, please make it enthusiastic. Aplaudo un poco más por mi año de casado, por favor. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you very gracias, much. Gracias, gracias por you. todos. Both weddings, even though uh, quite some time apart, aunque un poquito diferentes los años donde pasaron las bodas, began with some very familiar words. Iniciaron con unas palabras un poco similares. Dearly beloved. Queridos amados, we're gathered together here in the sight of God and in the presence of these witnesses. Estamos reunidos aquí a la vista de Dios en presencia de estos testigos. To join together this man and this woman in holy matrimony, which is an honorable state 
instituted of God during man's innocence. Para unir a este hombre y esta mujer en santo matrimonio que es un estado honorable, instituido por Dios en el tiempo de la inocencia de la humanidad. It signifies to us the mystical union that exists between Christ and his church. Significando para nosotros la unión mística que existe entre Cristo y su iglesia. This holy estate, Christ adorned and beautified with his presence and first miracle in Cana of Galilee. Esta santa propiedad que Cristo adornó y embelleció con su presencia y el primer milagro que realizó en Cana de Galilea. St. Paul commended marriage as being honorable among all men. San Pablo calificó de, honora, de honorable entre todos los humanos. It is therefore not to be entered into unadvisedly, but reverently, discreetly, and in the fear of God. Por lo tanto, no se debe entrar sin asesoramiento, sino con reverencia, discreción, y en el temor de Dios. And into this holy estate, these persons present now come to be joined. En esta sagrada institución, estas personas aquí frente a nosotros vienen a unirse. And if you're sitting next to somebody that's not your spouse, don't kiss them now or things will happen here. No besen a la persona que está a su lado si no es su esposa porque algo va a pasar. How many of you had similar words to start off your marriage? Let me see your hands. Alguien que se casó, quien tuvo palabras similares. Many of us. Muchos de nosotros. There's just something about those words. Hay algo interesante que esas palabras. And after 33 years of marriage, de 33 años de matrimonio, after more than 33 weddings that I've officiated, y más de 33 bodas que yo he, he administrado, those words never seem to lose their emphasis. Esas palabras nunca pierden su énfasis. And those beautiful words almost always seem to shout one strong message. Y esas palabras todas tienen un mensaje muy poderoso. Sacred. Sagrado. Sacred. Sagrado. Honorable, honorable, instituted of God, algo que Dios instituyó, mystical, místico, holy, santo, reverent, reverente, discreet, discreto, in the fear of God, en el temor de Dios. Those are powerful words. Esas son palabras poderosas. And in our world today, we most generally hear the word sacred. With a question. Y muchas veces en nuestra vida, en vida de hoy en día, escuchamos la palabra sagrado y le ponemos un signo de interrogación. Is nothing sacred anymore? ¿Todavía existe lo sagrado? Well, marriage is still sacred. Pues el matrimonio todavía es sagrado. We human beings might not treat it that way. Los seres humanos no lo tal vez no lo tratamos así. But God still treats it as sacred. Pero Dios todavía lo trata como si fuera sagrado. This message isn't about marriage, though. Este mensaje no es acerca del matrimonio. I, I think that we always need help with God's word in regards to our marriage. Siempre necesitamos la palabra de Dios para nuestros matrimonios. But that's not what we're talking about today. Pero no estamos hablando de eso el día de hoy. How about in the church? ¿Qué tal en la iglesia? Is nothing sacred anymore? ¿Cuáles son las cosas sagradas que existen en la iglesia? What are some things that are still sacred in the church? ¿Cuáles son algunas cosas que todavía son sagradas en la iglesia? Communion. La Santísima Comunión. Communion is still sacred. La Santísima Comunión todavía es sagrada. We take communion, we, we don't take it lightly. La tomamos la Santísima Comunión y no la tomamos como si fuera nada. We don't joke and laugh about communion. No empezamos a hacer bromas y a reírnos en medio de la Santísima Comunión. Because of what it symbolizes. Por lo que simboliza. Christ's body that was broken for us. El cuerpo de Cristo que fue quebrantado por nosotros. The blood that was shed. Y la sangre que fue derramada. Scott mentioned something that's sacred. Scott mencionó algo que es sagrado. Baptism. El bautismo. It's a sacred celebration. Es una celebración sagrada. It's not a big swimming party. No es una no no es un tiempo para que todos empecemos a nadar. Because it's sacred. Porque es sagrado. It means something. It's showing an outside sign of an inward change. Significa algo. Es es un es una muestra de un cambio de un cambio exterior de lo que está en realidad pasando en el interior. And if you would like to be baptized, y esto quiere ser bautizado. Again, I want to show it to you one more time. Se lo voy a mostrar una vez más. The last Sunday of August. El último domingo de agosto. And uh, you can see me if you would like to be baptized. Nos pueden ver a nosotros si quieren ser bautizados. Those two, communion and baptism, those are two sacraments in the Church of the Nazarene. La Santísima Comunión y el bautismo son sacramentos en la Iglesia del Nazareno. But there are other things that are sacred. Pero también otras cosas que son sagradas within the church. 
dentro de la iglesia? What's something else that is sacred? ¿Qué más hay sagrado en la iglesia? The cross is sacred. La cruz es sagrada. It symbolizes again what Christ has done. Simboliza lo que Cristo hizo por nosotros. The word of God is sacred in the church. La palabra de Dios es santa en la iglesia. We use the scripture in songs. Usamos la escritura en cantos. In prayer. En oración. In our small groups. En medio de nuestros grupos pequeños. We use the scripture as the basis for what we're doing now. La escritura es la base para lo que estamos haciendo en este instante. We use the scripture in our prayers. Lo usamos en nuestras oraciones. Speaking of prayer, hablando de la oración, that's sacred. También eso es santo, sagrado. It's the foundation of everything. El fundamento para todo. But there's something else that is sacred in the church. Pero algo más que es sagrado en la iglesia. I haven't mentioned it. You haven't mentioned it. Usted no lo ha mencionado. Yo no lo he mencionado. The church itself is sacred. La iglesia misma es sagrada. Remember the words at the beginning of the wedding? Recuerda las palabras en medio de la de, de la ceremonia de boda? That marriage signifies to us the mystical union that exists between Christ and the church. Que para nosotros el matrimonio significa la mágica unión, la unión mística que existe entre Cristo y su iglesia. The church is sacred. La iglesia es sagrada. And I'm not talking about the building. Y no estoy hablando acerca de un edificio. I think we recognize that we've been blessed with this incredible facility. Creo que reconocemos que hemos sido bendecidos con este edificio. And we should respect it. Y lo debemos respetar. We should take care of the church, uh, the building better than we take care of our own homes. Y tenemos que cuidar de este de este edificio mejor de lo cuidamos de nuestras propias casas. But I'm not talking about the physical building being the church. Pero no estoy hablando acerca de esto físico siendo la iglesia. I'm talking about the church. Estoy hablando de la iglesia. Honorable, honorable, instituted of God, instituida, establecida por Dios mismo, mystical, mística, holy, santa, reverent, reverente. Do these words still describe the church in July 2019? Hoy día de julio del 2019 todavía esto estas palabras describen a la iglesia. Do they describe this body that's gathered today known as the Westerville Church of the Nazarene? Y acaso describe este cuerpo de creyentes llamado que que está reunido aquí hoy llamado la iglesia en la ciudad de Westerville? We're beginning a new series of messages today. Y hacemos una nueva serie de mensajes el día de hoy. It's called a modern day challenge to the church. Es llamado un reto para la iglesia de hoy. It's based on a book by Francis Chan called Letters to the Church. Está basado en un libro por Francis Chan llamado Cartas a la Iglesia. And Francis Chan says there's no greater honor on earth than to be a part of God's church. Y el autor dice no hay mayor honor en la tierra que ser parte de la iglesia de Dios. And when I read that I said, "Really?" Y cuando dije yo, "¿En serio?" Is that even close to being true? Eso es verdad. If the church is not the building, then what is it? Si la iglesia no es un edificio, entonces ¿qué es lo que es? It's the people. Es la gente. So if it's sacred, entonces si es santa, why do we criticize each other so much? Porque es que nos criticamos tanto. Why do we sometimes feel like we have to pretend in the church? Porque a veces sentimos que tenemos que pretender en la iglesia. Why do we gossip? Porque es que chismeamos. Why do we jump from one church to another church to another church? Porque es que pasamos saltando de una iglesia a otra iglesia a otra. Gathering together with the the sacred church and and worshiping a sacred God is indeed an honor. Reunirse juntos con la iglesia santa y adorar un Dios santo es algo increíble, es algo que tiene mucho honor. It is legitimately sacred. Es sagrado por naturaleza. And yet why is it such a low priority to so many of us? Y por qué es que está una prioridad tan baja para muchos de nosotros? Why don't we enter our worship spaces with a sense of awe and reverence? ¿Por qué no entramos a nuestros lugares de adoración con un sentimiento, un sentir de de asombro? Francis Chan says this. También el autor dice lo siguiente. Gathering with the church should lead us to holy ground. Reunirnos con la iglesia nos debe de llevar a una tierra santa. Is there still such a thing as holy ground or is that just an Old Testament idea? ¿Y todavía tierra santa o eso es algo antiguo? Is that just an old story about Moses and a burning bush? Y esa es una una historia antigua acerca de Moisés y una zarza que está ardiendo. There was a moment 
Hubo un momento in Edward and Ashley's wedding. En la, en la boda mía y de Ashley. When I sensed we were on holy ground. Cuando yo sentí que estábamos en tierra santa. I mean, with all the chaos of coming from outside and the rain and coming inside and everything that was going on. Con todo el caos cuando empezó a llover estábamos afuera y tuvimos que regresar adentro. There was still a point in that ceremony. Siempre hubo un momento en la ceremonia where I sense something deeper than just words. Cuando yo sentí algo un poquito más fuerte que palabras. I thought we have this holy young man. Tenemos un hombre joven santo who's trying to be godly. Que trata de ser santo. And this holy young lady who's trying to live her life for Christ. Y tenemos esta joven santa que quiere que quiere vivir su vida con Cristo. And we have this infinite God that is somehow joining the two of them with Himself. Y después un Dios tan infinito que lo está uniendo a los dos con el mismo. And it's, it was powerful to me. Fue poderoso para mí. I almost started crying. Casi empecé a llorar. And I thought nobody will notice because I'm sweating so much. Y voy a decir nadie se va a dar cuenta porque estoy sudando tanto. It all blend together. Todo va a parecer lo mismo. But does that ever happen in our church? Pero eso pasa en nuestra iglesia. Does it happen enough that we we have this sense of being on holy ground? lo suficiente como que sentimos este este sentir de que estamos en tierra santa? We're we're encountering this incredible, overwhelming, holy God. Que estamos encontrando con un Dios infinito. While we're gathered together with God's holy people. Mientras nos reunimos juntos con la gente santa, el pueblo santo de Dios. Who are not perfect, but who are forgiven. Pero que no son perfectos, pero que son perdonados. Would anybody ever describe our church as being sacred? Alguien describiría nuestra iglesia siendo santa? Something that's honorable. Algo que es honorable? Mystical. Místico. Holy and reverent. Santo y reverente. I want to spend the remainder of our time today in God's sacred word. Quiero que pasemos el resto de nuestro tiempo juntos en la palabra de Dios. And I want to look not at three points. Y no quiero que miremos a tres puntos. But just one mystical aspect of the church Pero solo un aspecto de la iglesia of God's church de la iglesia de Dios of our church de nuestra iglesia and again I'm not talking about the facility y no estoy hablando del edificio de nuevo the body of Christ here in Westerville Pero el cuerpo de Cristo aquí en Westerville and here's the mystical aspect I want to speak about y aquí está el aspecto místico del cual quiero hablar that we are a part of Christ's body que nosotros somos parte del cuerpo de Cristo and we learn about this unusual concept in Paul's letter to the church in Ephesus. And oddly, the New, the New International Version calls this section of the scripture something interesting. Instructions for Christian households. Instructions for Christian households. And that's kind of funny to me. Yes, un poco gracioso para mí. Our household is crazy most of the time. Nuestra casa no tiene orden usualmente. People are coming and going. La gente viene y va. Sometimes there's people in our house I don't even know who they are. A veces hay gente en mi casa que yo ni siquiera sé quién son. And then we have the dogs running around. Y después están los perros corriendo por todos lados. Sometimes there's dogs in our house that I don't even know. That's not true. A veces hay perros en mi casa que yo no conozco. Es mentira. So I just think it's weird that that the Apostle Paul is talking about household instructions. Entonces yo siento que es extraño que el Apostol Pablo está hablando acerca de instrucciones para el hogar. And he's going to present this mystery. Y si quiere presentar este misterio. Why would he put that in the middle of this? ¿Por qué lo pondría todo esto en medio de esto? Because maybe it should be a part of who we are at home. Porque tal vez es una parte de cómo debemos de ser en casa. Maybe it's it, maybe it's so practical. Tal vez es tan práctico. That it's who we are. Que es quienes somos. In our households. En nuestras casas. So look with look with me at this chapter. Entonces miremos este capítulo. Submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. Sumidas unos a otros por reverencia a Cristo. And let me tell you right here before we move on. Y antes de que sigamos adelante, escuchemos esto. That's usually not mentioned when we mention the next verse. Eso no es mencionado usualmente cuando mencionamos el siguiente versículo. Wives, submit yourself to your own husbands as you do to the Lord. Esposas, sometanse a sus propios esposos como al Señor. And I want to tell you, wives, y le quiero decir esposas, and I want to tell you, husbands, y les quiero decir esposos, that this verse is still 
from, from God's word. Este, esto es todavía la palabra de Dios. It's true. Es verdad. Wives need to submit to their husbands. Los, las esposas tienen que someter a sus esposos. But might I also remind you. Pero también les quiero recordar. This is the, I believe, the single most misquoted verse in the entire Bible. Este es uno de los versículos de las escrituras que menos he entendido. Not because people say it wrong. No porque la gente lo dice mal. But because they pull it out of context. Pero porque la gente lo sacan de la Biblia y lo ponen en otro lado. They don't show you what came right before it. No te muestran lo que vino antes. Show us that again. Atrás dice esto. Submit to one another. Sometanse unos a otros. And this... This is a whole different sermon for another time. Sermon otro rato. But let's continue on and, and see what comes after it, by the way. Pero miremos lo que viene después. For the husband's the head of the wife, as Christ is the head of the church, his body of which he's the Savior. Porque el esposo es cabeza de su esposa, así como Cristo es cabeza y salvador de la iglesia, la cual es su cuerpo. And as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit to their husbands in everything. Así como la iglesia somete a Cristo, también las esposas deben someterse a sus esposos. And the men are rejoicing. Y los hombres se alegran. And so they stop there. Y después paran ahí. Instead of moving on to the next verse. Y no siguen al siguiente versículo. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her to make her holy. Esposos, amen sus esposas así como Cristo amó a la iglesia y se entregó por ella para hacerla santa. Cleansing her by the washing with water through the word and to present her to himself as a, a radiant church. Él la purificó lavándola con agua mediante la palabra para presentársela a sí mismo como una iglesia radiante. Without stain or wrinkle or any other blemish, but holy and blameless. Sin manchas ni arrugas ni ninguna otra otra imperfección, sino santa e intachable. In this same way, husbands ought to love their wives as their own bodies. Asimismo, el esposo debe amar a su esposa como a su propio cuerpo. He who loves his wife loves himself. El que ama a su esposa se ama a sí mismo. And so basically what you have going on here. Entonces básicamente lo que está pasando por aquí. If you're fair to the scripture. Si tú conoces la escritura y lo que está diciendo la escritura. And if you don't pull out just the part about the wives. Y no solamente saca esa partecita acerca de las esposas. If you have these wives who are submitting to their husbands. Si tienes estas mujeres que se están eh, sometiendo a sus esposos. And you have these Husbands who are surrendering to their wives. Y estos que se están rindiendo ante sus esposas. And if you take those two words, surrender and submit. Si tomas dos palabras, someterse y rendirse. And look at the original language. Y miramos al griego original. They're very closely related. Son muy relacionados. And so you have a wife that's trying to outserve her husband. Y tenemos a una esposa que quiere amar y se quiere amar demasiado a su esposo. And you have a husband who's trying to outserve his wife. Y que tenés un esposo que quiere servir sobre sobre servir abrumadamente a su esposa. And it becomes this beautiful thing. Y se vuelve esta cosa bella. That would make the world stop and go, wow. Que haría que el mundo parara y dijera qué pasó. What do they have going on? Qué es lo que está pasando con ellos. The Apostle Paul continues. El Apostle Pablo continúa. After all, no one ever hated their own body, but they feed and care for their body. Pues nadie odiaba jamás su propio cuerpo. El, al contrario, lo alimenta y lo cuida. Just as Christ does the church, for we are members of His body. Así como Cristo hace con la iglesia, porque somos miembros de su cuerpo. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife. The two will become one flesh. Por eso dejará el hombre a su, a su padre y a su madre y le se unirá a su esposa. Y los dos llegarán a ser un solo cuerpo. This is a profound mystery, but I'm talking about Christ and the church. Este es un misterio profundo. Yo me refiero a Cristo y a la iglesia. However, each one of you also must love his wife as he loves himself, and the wife must respect her husband. En todo caso, cada uno de ustedes ame también a su esposa como a sí mismo y que la esposa te respete a su esposo. And I love what the Apostle Paul did here. Y yo amo lo que el Apostle Pablo hizo por aquí. I think he was being very intentional. Yo creo que está siendo muy intencional. He sneaks in this profound, mystical truth. Pone esta verdad mística. In the middle of the most practical instruction that he can be giving to a husband and a wife. En medio de la instrucción más práctica que se le puede dar a un esposo y una esposa. It's as if he says, oh yeah, by, by the way, we're members of his body. Y solo para que sepan como que dijera así, somos miembros del cuerpo de Cristo. And as Paul presents this practical truth about how we should live as husbands and wives, y mientras Pablo está enseñando esta, esta, esta verdad tan práctica, it sounds like he's arguing with himself. Parece que está discutiendo con sí mismo. 
You see how many times he, he talked about Christ and the church while he was instructing the husband and the wife? ¿Ven cuántas veces él está hablando acerca de Cristo y la iglesia cuando está hablando del, del esposo y la esposa? Christ is the head of the church. Cristo es la cabeza del y el salvador de la iglesia. As the church submits to Christ. Así como la iglesia somete a Cristo. Just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. Así como Cristo se amó a la iglesia y se entregó por ella. As a radiant church, como una iglesia radiante, just as Christ does the church, así como Cristo hace con la iglesia, so much so that we begin wondering, what is he talking about? Y entonces nos preguntamos si de qué estás hablando, Pablo. Is Paul talking about marriage? Está hablando del matrimonio? Or is he talking about church? O está hablando de la iglesia? He can't make up his mind. No parece que no se puede entender a sí mismo. And finally, at the end of his instruction, y al final the, de esta instrucción, it's as if the apostle Paul makes a decision. Es como que el apóstol Pablo tomó una decisión. I was talking about marriage. Yo estaba hablando del matrimonio. But I'm talking about church. Estoy hablando de la iglesia. Talking about husbands and wives. Estoy hablando de esposos y esposas. Talking about Christ and the church. Pero la Cristo y la iglesia. And then he says this. Y después dice esto. This is a profound mystery. Esto es un misterio profundo. But I'm talking about Christ and the church. Yo me refiero a Cristo y a la iglesia. And if you accented certain words, it could sound like this. Y si pone un acento en diferentes de estas palabras, dice lo siguiente. This is a profound mystery. Esto es un misterio profundo. But I am talking about Christ and the church. Y solo para que sepan, yo estoy me estoy refiriendo a Cristo y a la iglesia. And the whole time I thought he was talking about husbands and wives. Yo creo que estaba hablando acerca de esposos y esposas. Look what came right before his conclusion. Miren lo que dice antes de su conclusión. For this reason a man will leave his father and mother, be united to his wife, the two will become That's very marriage oriented. Por eso dejará el hombre su madre, su madre y se unirá a su esposa, eso tiene que ver mucho con el matrimonio. Because that's the Apostle Paul quoting an Old Testament passage Porque este el Apostle Pablo refiriéndose a un pasaje del Antiguo Testamento which definitely has sexual connotations. que definitivamente tiene connotaciones sexuales. So we think he's talking about marriage. Entonces pensamos que está hablando acerca del matrimonio. He, he can't be talking about this relationship between Christ and the church that is so intimate. No puede estar hablando acerca de esta relación entre Cristo y la iglesia que es tan íntima. He couldn't be arguing that the church and Christ are, are so united. No puede estar argumentando que la iglesia y Cristo son tan, están tan unidos. That it makes us one. Que nos hace uno. So I think, okay, let's investigate the context again. Así que investiguemos un poco esto. Let's look at the crime scene. Miremos a la escena del crimen. You might remember a couple weeks ago. De, tal vez recuerda unas cuantas semanas atrás. I, I introduced this new method to study our scripture. En vimos este método para estudiar las escrituras called investigative scripture research. Llamada la investigación profunda de las escrituras. So it's like we're doing an investigation of a crime scene. Parece que está haciendo una investigación de un, de un lugar de crimen. And the crime scene is the context of the scripture. Y el lugar de crimen es la escena del crimen es el contexto de la escritura. So let's look at the crime scene. Entonces miremos a la escena. And remember we're trying to determine is Paul talking about marriage or is he talking about Christ and the church. Entonces no queremos ver acerca si Pablo está hablando del matrimonio, de Cristo y la iglesia. Let's go backwards from his statement. Vamos de, de atrás para adelante. I'm talking about Christ and the church. He just said it there. Estoy hablando acerca de Cristo y la iglesia. Lo acaba de decir. Take a step back. Regresemos un poco. He's talking about marriage. Este, pues, está hablando acerca del matrimonio. So take another step back. Regresemos un poco. After all, no one ever hated their own body, but they feed and care for their body. Él alimenta, la gente alimenta y cuida su propio cuerpo. Just as Christ does the church. Así como Cristo hace con la iglesia. For we are members of his body. Porque somos miembros de su cuerpo. And there it is, there's this, this shocking mystery. Y está este misterio tan impactante. That we could so easily pass over thinking he's talking about husbands and wives. Que simplemente podemos dejar pasar por la vista ya que pensamos que está hablando de esposos y esposas. When sandwiched in between all this stuff Cuando en medio de todas estas cosas, is this profound mystical truth es esta verdad tan mística y tan profunda, that we are part of his body. Que somos nuestros parte de su cuerpo. That's exactly what the Apostle Paul is saying here. De eso está hablando el Apostle Pablo. And yes, this passage works for marriage. Y si este pasaje funciona para el matrimonio. It's a great model for how our marriages should work. Es un modelo acerca de cómo deben de trabajar a funcionar nuestros matrimonios. But after looking into it, pero después de ver profundamente ante él, 
I don't think Paul's really talking about marriage. Yo no creo que Pablo está hablando del matrimonio. In quite the understatement. En lugar está hablando de algo mucho más grande. Paul says this is a profound mystery. Dice Pablo este es un misterio profundo. I'm talking about Christ and the church. Y lo que hablo de Cristo y de la iglesia. So we live in this culture. Vivimos en esta cultura nosotros. Where so much of everything is based on ourselves. Donde la mayoría de las cosas que pasan están basadas en nosotros mismos. That even when we look at the word of God. Que incluso cuando vemos a la palabra de Dios. Or hear the word of God preached. O escuchamos la palabra de Dios siendo predicada. We begin to ask questions that include the word me. Comenzamos a preguntar, hacernos preguntas de ¿y qué pasó conmigo? We want an application. Nosotros queremos una aplicación. We want to do something. Queremos hacer algo. And so we say, what can this sermon do for me? Entonces nos preguntamos y qué puede hacer este sermón para mí. How does it help me? ¿Cómo es que me ayuda a mí? How does it apply to me? ¿Cómo me se aplica a And mí? What am I supposed to do? ¿Qué es lo que estoy haciendo? ¿Qué es lo que debo de hacer? And I'm not sure as I look through this that there's anything we can do with this conclusion today. Yo no sé si hay algo que podemos hacer con esta conclusión el día de hoy. Except just sit here for a moment. Más que solamente sentarnos por un rato. In silence. En silencio. In, in awe, in wonder. En asombro. At the sacred. A lo sagrado. Maybe all we can do is just sit here and marvel at this incredible privilege. Tal vez simplemente nos podemos sentar y maravillar ante el privilegio tan increíble. This mystery. Este, ministerio, este misterio. That somehow we are married, so to speak. Que de alguna manera estamos casados. The church is somehow married to Christ. Que la iglesia está casada con Cristo. Not in a bad marriage. No un matrimonio malo. In a good marriage. Pero un buen matrimonio. That lasts forever. Que dura para siempre. After all, después de todo, no one ever hated their own body. Nadie ha odiado jamás su propio cuerpo. They feed and care for their body just as Christ does the church. Al contrario, lo alimenta y lo cuida así como Cristo hace con la iglesia. For we are members of his body. Porque somos miembros de su cuerpo. And I think, well, what can we do about this truth? ¿Y qué podemos hacer acerca de esta realidad? I was trying to think, what can, what can I tell us all to do about this truth? And if, if you're one of those people that are like me that has to have something to do at the end of a sermon, here's what I would say. Be stunned. Be stunned. Be stunned at the miracle that you and I as human beings Estemos atónitos al milagro que tú y yo como seres humanos are joined with each other as the church que estamos en el presente unidos and we're joined together with this eternal almighty God al mismo tiempo estamos unidos con este Dios eterno standing on holy ground parados en una tierra santa And the closest thing that we have in life to compare to this mystery. Y la cosa más cercana que tenemos esta idea para comparar a este misterio is a marriage. Es un matrimonio. And that moment at Edward and Ashley's wedding. Y aquel momento en la boda mía de Ashley. When after 33 years of marriage. Cuando después de 33 años de matrimonio, I still sensed. I was on holy ground. Siempre sentía que estaba en tierra santa. Sacred. Santa. There is something in this world that's still sacred. Hay cosas en este mundo que todavía son sagradas. And that should leave us speechless today. Y nos debe dejar atónitos. Hoy. We're always so busy. Siempre estamos tan ocupados. We're, we're moving, we're doing things. Nos movemos, hacemos cosas. But for this moment, pero por este momento, since we're on holy ground, mientras estamos en tierra santa, since this is sacred stuff, mientras esto es algo santo, this union between Christ and the church, esta unión entre Cristo y la iglesia, let's just take it in. Solo absorbámoslo. We're not going to understand it. No lo vamos a entender because it's a mystery. Ya que por alguna razón es un misterio. And not all mysteries in God's uh, 
infinite being y Dios es un Dios infinito are able for us to solve y no vamos a resolver todos los misterios so we sit here in this mystery así que nos sentamos estamos en este misterio that what we are today que lo que somos hoy and who we are today y quienes somos hoy is honorable es honorable it's instituted it, it's created by God establecido creado por Dios it's mystical es algo mystical it, it's, it's holy es santo it's reverent es reverente it's discreet discreto it's sacred santo sagrado so let's just bow today simplemente inclinemos nuestros rostros in holy quietness y en silencio and recognize that there's something sacred about what we're doing this morning y reconozcamos que algo sagrado acerca de lo que estamos haciendo esta mañana it's not just I get up and go to church no es simplemente que me levanto y para la iglesia it's more than that hay más And it's profound. Es profundo. It's holy ground. Es tierra santa. It's stunning. Nos deja tonitos. We are privileged and honored today. Estamos honrados, privilegiados hoy. To be joined together. De estar unidos juntos. With Christ's body. El cuerpo de Cristo. It overcomes time and space and eternity. Hay muchos más allá de la eternidad y el tiempo y de todo el espacio. And so let's just take it in. Solo tomemos un momento para reflexionar.